بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس ویلکم یو آر ٹو دا انڈسٹریل فارمیسی کلاس ایز یو نو فور ٹو ڈے از دا فرسٹ کلاس اف دس ویک اینڈ دا اوور آل کلاس نمبر آن لیکچر نمبر از 25 اینڈ دس سر 25 لیکچر دیٹ از انٹائٹلڈ انفلیمیبل گیسز اینڈ ڈسٹ ہیزر Recalling from the previous lectures uh, in which we have studied in detail about the uh, different types of the hazard and the safety aspects in the pharmaceutical industry. So far we have discussed chemical hazard, mechanical hazards and detail. And apart from uh, this lecture, today we will discuss one of the other hazards that is very much important and found as inflammable gases and uh, dust hazard. The main objectives is to learn about the inflammable cases and dust hazard and today lecture we will discuss in detail uh, these two topics uh, regarding these two topics. We will uh, discuss heart protection, sources and prevention of inflammable cases and uh, dust hazard. Dear students, after the completion of this lecture you will be able to know and learn about the uh, and time of gases and dust hazard the brief introduction the sources of inflammable gases and the different gases which are employed in the pharmaceutical industries that are inflammable in nature and the sources of dust hazard and how we will prevent the inflammable gases and dust hazard if uh, these hazards occur in the pharmaceutical industries then what will be our protocols for prevention and what will be the method uh, for prevention of inflammable gases and dust hazard. Dear students, uh, as you know, uh, hazardous gases are one of the most prominent hazards which is to be taken and several volatile and flammable liquids are employed in the pharmaceutical industries. This liquid get get vaporized when exposed to at or above room temperature, causing air pollution. And the vapor gets ignited and leading towards the fire accidents or one of the other hazards that is fire hazard, which we have discussed discussed in detail the different types of the fire hazards and the pharmaceutical industries and. Uh, that uh, ignition uh, not only causing the fire accident but also explosion may occur and further they tend to spread rapidly into the surrounding area in the premises and the pharmaceutical industries. Now if these occur the inflammation uh, that is the inflammable gases are liquid uh, when leading toward the ignition and then causes a fire accident and explosion and uh, the rapid spreading, spreading in the surrounding area in the pharmaceutical industries now these uh, hazardous gases uh, which are due to the uh, volatile and flammable liquid vaporization and uh, further uh, the ignition and the fire accident and so on explosion and uh, rapid spreading in the uh, premises uh, get toward the loss the result ultimately results in loss and lo loss of life and property. Uh, which we have uh, defined uh, hazard that hazard may be not only uh, the injury or the loss of uh, life or it may be dangerous not only for the life 
but are also for not only for the personal or human working over there but also uh, for the loss of property and the loss of material as well and uh, these events uh, result in the uh, loss of life and property and storage and handling of these hazardous gases need special attention to avoid hazard the various types of gases are uh, which are in the pharmaceutical industry the combustible gases and toxic gases and oxygen displacing gases these are the three main types of the gases uh, that is uh, classified or types of the classification uh, that is uh, categorized under the three uh, three portals uh, named as combustible gases toxic gases and oxygen displacing gases combustible gases uh, that cause explosion hazard must contain below lower explosive limit toxic gases which are hazardous, hazardous to human health implied exposure must be limited in order to avoid their toxicity and the symptom of toxicity which is uh, toxic to the personal working in the premises and uh, the employees should be instructed to use a preventive care should be taken and prevention should be adopted that uh, the limited exposure to these toxic gases and the third category of gases that is oxygen displacing gases uh, that is uh, indirect human health hazard and uh, deficiency of breathing oxygen occur due to the displacement of the oxygen by the oxygen displacing gases uh, one of the uh, gas that is uh, hydrogen sulfide uh, that is in the air separated in the air and it gets in the air uh, and different concentration on the left side uh, that is uh, hydrogen sulfide in air and uh, different concentrations are written on the table and on the right side the toxic symptoms of the relevant concentration of the hydrogen sulfide uh, remember that if uh, the hydrogen sulfide that occur uh, that is in concentration of 1 ppm that is 1 part per million the order detected irritation of respiratory tract is that, that is a toxic symptom if the concentration is 1 ppm but if we, uh, concentration of the hydrogen sulfide increase up to 10 ppm and uh, ten, uh, 10 ppm concentration allowable for 8 hours exposure otherwise uh, it is become dangerous and, uh, and at 20 ppm protective equipment is necessary because if it is uh, a 10 ppm concentration then for 8 hour exposure is allowed uh, and uh, if it the like, concentration exceeding uh, to up to 20 percent concentration uh, that is up to 20 per ppm then protective equipment that is the personal protective equipment and necessary uh, to avoid the exposure to the hydrogen sulfide if it occur in the air uh, at concentration of 20 parts per million when the concentration reaches uh, 100 ppm smell killed in 5 to 15 minutes and may burn eyes and throats and uh, coughing occur a little word coughing and this and the 500 ppm concentration respiratory disturbances in 2 to 15 minutes and coughing collapse and unconscious are the toxic symptoms that is due to the hydrogen side uh, in air concentration uh, limited uh, period the uh, 500 ppm and another concentration uh, that is uh, if it is hydrogen sulfide in the air concentration reaches uh, 1000 part per million then immediate unconsciousness is the leading of toxic symptom and uh, brain damage may result unless rescued promptly or immediately and death in 3 to 5 minutes
another uh, gases that is uh, oxygen displacing gases and oxygen is uh, very much essential for human and uh, oxygen deficiency may lead towards symptom developed and the different concentration of the oxygen and in this table you can see uh, that 20.9% uh, oxygen that is normal oxygen concentration in the air and uh, if the oxygen displacement gases uh, displaces the oxygen and oxygen deficiency occur and uh, 15 to 19% uh, concentration of oxygen in the air uh, that is uh, decrease ability to uh, work strenuously. It means that if the uh, concentration is lowered and it is decreased and uh, below the 20.9 percent and uh, the limit of the 15 to 19 percent uh, then decrease ability to work strenuously in the workplace. If the concentration of oxygen in the air uh, reaches uh, in the limit of 12 to 14 percent uh, in this case the symptom develops that is the respiration increases in exertion, pulse up, impaired coordination, perception and judgment and uh, further lowered the oxygen in the air that is uh, the concentration of 8 to 10 percent. In this case mental failure, fainting, unconsciousness, uh, blueness of lips, nose vomiting are the uh, leading uh, symptoms that develop uh, at this concentration. Uh, while in the concentration of 6 to 8 percent uh, with oxygen in the air, uh, 8 minutes that is 100 percent fatal, uh, 6 minutes 50 percent fatal, and uh, the further duration that is 4 to 5 minutes, uh, with, uh, it is possible to recover with the treatment. If it is further decrease the concentration and uh, the concentration 4 to 6 percent limit that is coma in 40 seconds even though there is a short time that is 40 seconds uh, the person acrobatized and convulsions occur and respiratory uh, respiration ceases and uh, eventually causing the death of the personal working at a concentration of oxygen and air that is uh, 4 to 6 percent. Uh, you can see 40% uh, to 20.9% that is a safe one but when the uh, concentration of oxygen decreases uh, in this case uh, you can see that is 50 to 19% of so the septum develop and so on 20 to 14% and uh, at the lowest that is the 4 to 6% uh, that is the uh, coma conversion uh, respiratory uh, failure and uh, the leading cause ultimately uh, the death. Now in this slide I will tell you about the hazardous gases management that how we will manage the hazardous gases if the hazardous gases are there in the pharmaceutical industry or in the premises or at the workplace then how we will handle and uh, how we can uh, the important precautions we should follow uh, compressed cases are fed in cylinders and transported to the place of use. The important precautions to be followed are given below. The first one is cylinders should not be popped or per permitted to strike against each other. If you have two or more than two cylinders and that you are going to strike the cylinder with one another and uh, dropping the cylinder, uh, these are uh, not a good practice because of the uh, hazardous gases. Uh, are there that is uh, compressed gases are fed in the cylinder and transported uh, to the workplace and for uh, the purpose of use and uh, so the cylinder should be not be dropped or permitted to strike against each other. Uh, the second one is a special and standard tool should be used on walls and the wall should be used cautiously uh, the, using the tools the safety tools are there which are to be used because uh, of the special and standard tools are designed and developed for this purpose and it should be used uh, rather than to use the rough walls uh, using the <coughs> other tools which are not suitable or appropriate for this purpose. The uh, third one uh, that is uh, not on the second one.
third one uh, the surrender should be protected against uh, activities of weather particularly against uh, excess of rise in temperature uh, because uh, it may cause the uh, some problems uh, that is the worst thing are the uh, release of the cases and uh, high chloral matter uh, due to uh, the high or rise in temperature uh, in this case the surrender should be protected against activity of weather and the fourth one is uh, cylinder uh, receive should be a uh, conspicuous that is cleared to understand standard level without any ambiguity indicating the kind of gas uh, the color of flavors shows whether gas is inflammable corrosive or inert or uh, it is uh, written on the label that uh, care should be taken and uh, the nature of the gas Uh, should be properly labeled or uh, sometimes uh, we use the uh, color uh, for this purpose uh, that is uh, for inflammable gases for corrosive or for the inert gases and full cylinder should be separated from empty cylinder if any cylinder that is full and it should be uh, separated from the empty cylinder to avoid any problem in future another uh, method for this purpose uh, to provide safety and uh, that is the gas sensor placement uh, place sensor close to possible gas source in order to provide the information and the sensing about the leakage of gas place sensor in area where gas might accumulate that the gas is released and it is accumulated and the sensor should be uh, placed over there in the area uh, where it is possible to accumulate the gas and uh, place toxic gas and oxygen deficiency sensor in the breathing zone that uh, the toxic gas over there uh, that is uh, uh, the toxic gas sensor uh, to be placed in the, in the area uh, that is the breathing zone uh, and uh, it is also to be placed oxygen deficiency sensor because i have told you about the uh, various concentration of oxygen uh, in that particular slide uh, that uh, 20.9% normal oxygen concentration if the oxygen displacing gases are there uh, then uh, the oxygen concentration is uh, definitely uh, it is uh, lower and uh, for this purpose uh, we should place the toxic gas and oxygen deficiency sensor in the breathing zone consider accessibility and uh, maintenance issue if there is any uh, maintenance needed to uh, the area and the area where the cases are in primary cylinders to be maintained and the proper maintenance issue should be resolved on time to avoid any problem or uh, any hazard that is the primary cases for there Uh, before going to discuss the dust explosion uh, i will tell you about the some of the signs and symptoms regarding the gases that i have told you that cylinder should be a uh, conspicuous uh, standard level when you get in the kind of gas uh, and after that we will discuss the dust explosion and uh, uh, i will tell you about uh, now you can see uh, the different colors that are selected for the uh, different cylinders uh, and that is indication of the gases uh, that are included is understood that uh, according to the united industrial gases factory lsc Uh, you can see over there uh, the different colors indication you can see the color of the cylinder is only an indication always read the level to identify a cylinder's content uh, you can see acetylene that is the color selected for acetylene and helium and so on for air for hydrogen for ammonia and uh, nitrogen 
and argon, carbon dioxide, chlorine, oxygen that is uh, for medical purposes and oxygen that is not for some medical purposes. Uh, this is uh, one of the uh, cylinder scholars codes comply to British standard. Uh, some ranges follow uh, the uh, CGA standards. Uh, you can see uh, the different other colors that are used for this purpose. And another graph uh, that is a figure uh, showing the different colors of the cylinders, uh, color coding of gas cylinders. oxygen that is uh, according to color coding of gas cylinders oxygen according to USA according to uh, ISO that is white and but according to the uh, coding of the uh, USA that is uh, green color for air that is yellow or silver and uh, wire and uh, according to ISO international standard organization uh, the color of the cylinder is kept white or black but in case of carbon dioxide, it is grey color and similarly in the ISO it is also kept grey. For carbon dioxide and oxygen, grey and green uh, that is uh, according to the US but uh, according to the ISO that may be grey or white color. For helium uh, that is uh, brown color for both uh, US according to USA or according to ISO and uh, helium and oxygen that is brown and green and brown and white respectively according to USA and ISO similarly uh, you can see the nitrous oxide that is uh, blue color for both and cyclopropane that is orange color for both and, uh, and the ethylene uh, gas uh, that is uh, coded as red according to USA while violet in the uh, ISO standard and similar nitrogen that is black for both according to the USA standard and according to the ISO standard that is kept black these are the coding system Now uh, in this uh, section of the lecture, I will tell you about the dust explosion. Dust means if the maximum particle size of the solids in the mixture is 500 millimeter, and these are termed as dust, <coughs> if the solid particle size that is uh, in the mixture is 500 mm. Dust explosion is a rapid combustion of dust cloud uh, during the process. Heat and reaction products are evolved. The required oxygen for combustion is mostly supplied by air. There are several examples. Uh, one of that is uh, if iron or stone pieces get into the disintegrator or grinding mill sparking are emitted and in this uh, case the emission of the sparking which may bring about explosion with some easily combustible materials it has been found uh, that in the pharmaceutical industry 
dust of torch and dictate beside organic substances are extremely hazardous. And there are several other dust which may be uh, found in the pharmaceutical industry uh, leading toward the uh, dust hazard. There are different factors which impart or uh, impact a uh, dust explosion. And uh, the factors including particle size, uh, apart from particle size, chemical properties of the dust, moisture content and cloud dispersion. Uh, these are the factors which impact on the dust explosion, uh, the dust explosion. Now how we will prevent or manage the dust management or dust explosion or dust hazard management? Uh, there are uh, three main focus we should adopt it, uh, the three points uh, or instructions. The first one is avoiding the development of explosive mixture and the second one is replacing the atmospheric oxygen by inert oxygen or inert gas. Uh, replacing the atmospheric oxygen by inert gas or using inert dust. Because uh, here I have told you uh, that the oxygen uh, that is uh, provided by the uh, for the combustion for the explosion uh, which is uh, provided by the air which is uh, in the air uh, here you can see the required oxygen for combustion uh, that is mostly supplied by air and uh, during the process heat and reaction products are involved and uh, because of the dust explosion there is a rapid combustion of a dust cloud uh, here uh, the oxygen if we remove the oxygen and if it properly replaces with the uh, inert gas or inert dust then in this case the oxygen will be replaced by uh, the inert gas or the inert dust by using the inert uh, dust this type of the explosion will be prevented and the third protocol we showed uh, in the procedure is there to avoid or manage the dust uh, that is the uh, dust hazard preventing the occurrence of effective ignition source. Uh, now in detail I will tell you that uh, how we will avoid the development of explosive, explosive mixture. Dust should not be accumulated at a place removed from the site as soon as it forms. To avoid uh, dust hazard and explosion due to the dust mixture. If you avoid the developed explosive mixture at uh, earliest and immediately if we remove from the site as soon as it falls uh, then it will be uh, one of the management of dust hazard. The second is replacing the atmospheric oxygen by energy gas or using inert dust. This process is also known as anotic. Because of the using of the inert gas or because of the using of the inert dust uh, due to the inertness it is termed as anotic. Explosion dust can be changed into mixture by the addition of inner dust such as rock salt and sodium sulfate so that uh, dust is diluted and neutralized to a level less than its lower limit of explosive range. So the explosion has avoided by using uh, the dilution of diluting the dust by the inner dust such as uh, rock salt or the sodium sulfate. Uh, another one is the addition of the uh, inert gases instead of the oxygen. And uh, the third procedure for the management of dust hazard that is preventing the occurrence of effective ignition source. But what is the effective ignition source? The AP prevent the occurrence of effective ignition source uh, that is some of the ignition sources are welding, smoking, cutting and mechanical generating uh, parts and the resulting hot sources the premises must be kept very clean eliminating all sources of ignition. So by uh, preventing the occurrence of effective ignition sources if the ignition sources are controlled or eliminated uh, then uh, dust explosion or dust hazards are prevented. Finally uh, the reference
that is uh, by the authors and moreover the title of the paper and the journal name that is international journal of applied research published at 2020 the volume number 6 a to 5 pages 1 to 7 and on the first you can see the authors to complete the paper uh, thank you all for your attention that's all about the and flammable gases and dust hazard and the pharmaceutical industry now let's overview the topic of the lecture that is inflammable gases and dust hazard so far we have studied the several hazardous gases introduction brief overview and then your results and the various various types of the uh, gases including combustible gases combustible toxic gases oxygen displacing gases and the uh, effect of the combustible gases toxic gases as well as oxygen displacing gases on the personal or on the human and then i have told how to discuss uh, about the hydrogen sulfide gas it is in the air and the different concentration 1 ppm concentration and the toxic symptoms developed by uh, this concentration of the hydrogen sulfide in the air They are similarly at 10 ppm, and the toxic symptoms develop at this concentration, and uh, 20 ppm uh, that is uh, leading to water protective trap, and is necessary for this purpose. Uh, if the hydrogen sulfide in the air uh, that is uh, 20 ppm concentration, and uh, 100 ppm concentration causing uh, causative results or the toxic symptoms develop. So on the 500 ppm and the 1000 ppm, and ultimately the 1000 ppm that is immediate unconsciousness is the leading cause, and the brain damage may result. And unless a uh, rescue should be promptly and immediately, otherwise the death may occur in the three to five minutes. Just uh, because it is very much toxic uh, at this concentration. Similarly, the oxygen deficiency. And this level we have discussed in detail. the normal level of oxygen concentration in the air similarly 15 to 19% concentration if it is lower below the normal then the, the symptom develops that is decreasing ability of uh, uh, working strenuously uh, more water Concentration decreasing 12 to 14 percent, 10 to 8 to 10 percent, 6 to 8 percent, and at 6 to 8 percent, the atmospheric exposure uh, at this concentration 100 percent fatal. For 6 minutes exposure, that is 50 percent fatal at that concentration. 4 to 5 minutes recovery or treatment. Uh, but if the concentration of oxygen in the air uh, becomes 46 percent at, at this concentration, the coma is just 40 seconds, uh, and conversion may be the leading causes that is developed and uh, respiration ceases of the personal and uh, leading to the death of the personal. So uh, this should be kept. Safe level concentration oxygen should be in the air. Hazardous gases management. That's how we will manage the hazardous gases. The different types of protocols we should follow. The instruction and uh, gas sensor placement should be done. 
and maintenance issues and considered accessibility and uh, we should place uh, the toxic gases and oxygen deficiency gases sensor in the breathing zone. Apart from this topic, we have discussed the dust explosion, that what is meant by the dust and what is uh, the dust explosion and this different example. Uh, one of that is the iron or stone pieces when get it uh, inside the disintegrator or grinding mills. Parts are emitted or ignition is take place. Uh, that bring about explosion with some as a combustible material. It has been also found uh, that in the pharmaceutical industry, dust of starch are detected beside organic substances are extremely hazard. And uh, apart from that, I told you about uh, various factors. Uh, that impacting for dust explosion, including the sum of the factors, uh, there is a particle size, the chemical properties of the dust, and uh, master content as well as cloud dispersion. Finally, we have discussed the dust management, that how we will manage the dust, and we should avoid the development of explosive mixture and replacing the atmospheric oxygen by uh, inert gas or using inert dust. And uh, the last one that is preventing the occurrence of effective origination source. And uh, at the end, reference. That's all about the dust, uh, dust excluded and inflammable gases. Uh, by using a dust hazard. Apart from uh, the various hazards, uh, in this video you can see the different types of uh, uh, workplace uh, hazards and uh, the different symbols you can see over there that is the symbol that is used for a hazard is danger or risk that is uh, one of the symbols and uh, what is uh, the hazard and what safety equipment do I wear and what do I do if there is an accident how do I get more information uh, these are the some of the uh, prominent questions that different symbols should be uh, used for this purpose and uh, the person should be properly trained about these symptoms looking towards the different symptoms uh, now you can see the different symbols by the screen the first one is uh, that is the WHMI system is WHMIS one is uh, that is uh, explosive that sample is used for the explosive material the second that is oxidizer this symbol is used for oxidizer we have it here yeah, this is our oxidizer that we have discussed in the previous week lectures it is uh, the symbol used for flammable labeled on the flammable material it is case under pressure the pressurized gas should be carefully handled if you want any hazards It is corrosive. The material is corrosive. The chemical is corrosive. You should be careful. It is uh, another one that is toxic. You shouldn't touch 
you should have smell and that is another symbol that is plus 10 or I irritation and uh, proper personal protective preference should be wear and that is for health hazard that is separate for the health hazard for one of the environment that is for environmental hazard Either this is based on the symbol that is a biohazard Uh, causing the contamination and the symptom is readable carefully document your surgery as you can see that these two are keyword symbols danger and uh, this is uh, one of the Radio recording the uh, hazard symptom. One of the abbreviation we have used in the uh, previous radio you have seen that is the uh, WHMIS uh, WHMIS uh, that is stand for workplace hazardous material information system and uh, workplace hazardous material information system or laws created in 1988 to uh, give employers and workers information about the hazardous products or chemicals that may be exposed to at at workplace the three main types of the uh, components of the uh, WHMIS are hazard identification and product classification labeling uh, safety data sheets and worker education and training that is about the WHMIS which can for workplace hazardous material information system and also I have told you about the main parts of the WHMIS the main components including the hazard identification, the fit type of hazard it is, the product classification according to the different hazard, its proper labeling, the safety data sheet that we have told, I have told you about the safety data sheet, the chemical safety data sheet, and other uh, safety data, sh data sheets relevant to the hazard, and uh, worker training and education uh, regarding the workplace hazard and the tackling of the workplace hazard uh, and moreover I have told you about the different uh, symptoms uh, these are the symptoms again I am repeating for you if we have also seen in the video that is flame was circle and uh, this cylinder for this is under pressurized health hazard according to WHMIS thank you all for your attention inshallah we will discuss this topic in the online Google session as well